uh, I'd like to focus now on the peace process with the Communist Party of the Philippines. The government panel has re recently withdrawn from the negotiations. You think this is just a temporary setback or a complete breakdown of the talks? What has been suspended is the formal yes. negotiation. But we are on two tracks here. Mm -hmm. We have the back channel or the informal channel. Yes. Where, uh, Conversations uh, on a daily basis sometimes, uh, fax messages and uh, personal visits are going on and on. So uh, it does not mean that we have stopped talking to the National Democratic Front leaders. Uh, that continues. The uh, happenings uh, recently where uh, attacks were conducted by groups identified with the National Democratic Front uh, is a setback, or are a setback. But uh, we would like to uh, appeal to the NDF to uh, see that there are many victims in these attacks who are peace-loving uh, people, uh, law enforcers. But uh, more importantly, uh, this is happening in some of our centers of population. And therefore, uh, instead of winning points for them, uh, would create negative reactions on the part of the majority of our people because there are victims. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I'd like to put all of that back on track again, as we did during the very difficult and contentious uh, negotiations with the military rebels and the Moro National Liberation yes. Front. Uh, maybe a little more patience and uh, a great deal of accommodation is needed from both sides. Do you see some... Uh fruits coming out of this before the end of your term, sir? Oh, yes, uh, definitely. Uh, we have uh, some very uh, solid commitments, I might uh, say, uh, on the part of the NDF leadership uh, in exchange for solid commitments on the part of our government of the uh, Republic of the Philippines panel. Uh, and so uh, I'm not giving up on this. I'm just counting on the good sense and the wisdom of uh, the people on both sides who are doing the negotiation to uh, come up with uh, win-win solutions as we have done already with uh, the two other fronts. Okay. Yeah. Going to the Muslim sector, are you yeah. satisfied with the performance of SPCBD chairman and uh, armed governor of Miswari? Well, considering the background and the conditions that he started from, I do believe that uh, Chairman Nur Miswari is doing a good job but we must be uh, aware of the fact that he started from being the uh, chief of uh, first a secessionist movement that became a movement for greater Mindanao Muslim autonomy. And uh, throughout all of that, he was a warrior. Now suddenly he is thrust into the position of being a political leader in a legal environment and a bureaucrat. Uh, a lot of the times. And so, uh, considering what uh, we are seeing from the other governors and the other regional leaders, that there has now been uh, worked out with uh, Chairman Nur Miswari a very good condition of uh, teamwork and solidarity. Uh, anyway, we have uh, already devolved to the ARMM, not just funds, and logistics, but also uh, authority and responsibilities. How do we assure the continuity of the Ramos administration's agenda for Mindanao? Well, again, the, lo the laws are there, and uh, quite a bit of the laws uh, on the economic and social uh, side uh, benefit Mindanao most of all, especially the provinces of the ARMM. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, we are pushing uh, two major initiatives, tourism which is uh, a service-oriented uh, kind of an industry and in which the local content is almost 100%. And so uh, we now have uh, regular air service as well as boat service as well as uh, inter-island ship service uh, all the way to Bungao at the end of uh, the archipelago in Tawi-Tawi. And the uh, people, the customers, the uh, traders, the tourists are coming from not just the Philippines, but also across the border from uh, the participant countries in Yaga, from Sabah, from Sarawak, from Kalimantan, from Sulawesi, 
also from uh, Brunei. Uh, this sort of thing is happening and it will be uh, unwise for my successor to undo that or at or least not support it. it. Mr. President, you, earlier you mentioned about yeah. the centennial uh, or a hundred years uh, of enjoying independence. You believe that this present generation of Filipinos truly appreciate and recognize this gift of freedom? I wish I, I could say that uh, they all did, but we, the uh, leaders now, must uh, create and uh, establish a greater interest in our centennial. The uh, awareness of the public, as shown by some surveys, is not all that good about the centennial. So uh, yesterday, I called upon all of the government public relations organizations whom I met uh, during their anniversary and award ceremony and uh, exhorted them to uh, inform the public more comprehensively and more uh, intensely about our centennial. Uh, then, of course, the private sector is playing a very big part. And uh, they're supportive in many ways, putting out uh, video messages and uh, print uh, stories, as well as supporting the uh, National Centennial Commission. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, as ordinary Filipinos, everyone must make an effort to arouse interest, uh, first among ourselves, and secondly, uh, to our friends and neighbors around. Uh, officially, we are doing this uh, very, very uh, uh, deeply, even to the extent of uh, me writing, heads of government, heads of state, uh, important leaders uh, around the world, to come to the Philippines and take part and enjoy our uh, celebration of our centennial. Mr. President, what has made the Philippines the only working democracy in Asia? It may not be the only working democracy, but uh, it is a working democracy mm -hmm. that is unique in Asia. Let me put it that way. Well, we've had the advantage of uh, the cross-pollination of so many cultures from the east, from the west, from the north and the south. That's one point. And no other country has this kind of uh, enculturation. Secondly, as far as political ideas are concerned, we have become the melting pot, so to speak, of all kinds of ideas. We have been exposed to most of them. Uh, communism, in a certain way, uh, uh, Muslim uh, uh, culture, uh, in another way, and of course, uh, to the Orient, uh, to which we belong, uh, we have had this experience. We are also uh, at the crossroads of commerce, fortuitously. And I think this is one of God's blessings upon the Filipino people. All of a sudden, we find ourselves in the middle of uh, the Pacific Ocean and the South China Sea, which were in the past uh, known as invasion routes. But now they are now invasion routes for commerce, for, commerce for investment, for tourism. Uh, even our uh, configuration as an archipelago, 7,100 islands, uh, gives us uh, a long, long coastline with a lot of areas for expansion, for opportunity, uh, for new ventures. And these have become attractive to people around the world. Mm -hmm. Mr. President, finally, as you reach the home stretch of your presidency, are you looking forward to becoming a private citizen once more? Yes, I am. But uh, I will not be uh, just in the shadows. I mean to uh, share with those that are willing to accept it uh, my uh, experience in uh, the Philippine government as president, but also as well as uh, a public servant of uh, 50 years yes. at uh, various levels, going up the ladder, the hard way sometimes. Uh, also, I uh, hope to uh, share and extend to others, especially the new leaders that are coming up, the advantage of uh, my own personal friendships and associations and linkages with uh, people that count around the world. Uh, and this, uh, fortunately, we've been able to uh, Establish and then reinforce during the last five and a half years. 
And so I see uh, it's still important and uh, surely uh, definitely. It's not uh, a retirement from public life. Active for me. No, yeah, no. It's very, very uh, active. Well, retirement from public life, but uh, action in the private sector. And in the meantime, for the next six months, you plan to vigorously continue your economic programs and campaign for your anointed one oh, def actively. Definitely. You'll be going around the country. It's not an anointment and that's it. Will you be actively campaigning in the countryside? Well, yes, I'll be campaigning for the country, actually, because uh -huh. I'll be campaigning for the person and persons that uh, I consider to be capable of, of continuing uh, carrying on and even improving because certainly the next batch should improve on what little things this administration has done mm -hmm. uh, again for the good of the people well with that mr president would like to thank you very much once again and uh, wish you every good wish on your forthcoming apex summit and your state visit Japan. thank you very much lauren and uh, mabuhay ang uh, abs -CBN and the whole network thank you After Corazon Aquino restored democracy in 1986, Fidel Valdez Ramos led us to economic recovery and gave renewed pride to the Filipino. Today, we see that indeed freedom and development serve us best when working harmoniously together. As we prepare to once again exercise a democratic right to elect a new leader, we are confident in the belief that the man who now sits in Malacanang is not leaving behind a country in chaos, but instead a nation invigorated by renewed hope and vision. The foundation for continued peace, progress and prosperity has been laid. Now, it will be up to his successor to steer this country onward and forge ahead into the next millennium. And that's the inside story. For ABS-CBN News and Current Affairs, I'm Laura Legata.